I've been really encouraged with the dialogue that's been going on between some of the teachers who've been using the GIS and the people who haven't been using it and, and their interest in, in what it does. What we hoped to achieve was uh, working with teachers to get an understanding of what geography may look like and more specifically to use the spatial technologies of the GIS uh, to work with students. We went about that first of all by uh, Malcolm McInerney coming down and working with uh, our leadership and, and myself and talking to our, our group. Uh, on another occasion he came down and did a staff development with the whole staff and following that we asked for volunteers who would be interested in being working with part of the pro project. Uh, and out of that we got uh, a number of teachers, so we had uh, a year two, year four, two year seven teachers and uh, the computer, the IC technology uh, teacher who works across the year levels. I was keen to use GIS in this trial because if we looked at our, our surrounding wetlands then we can do uh, layers of maps to show us the topography, the land use, the water courses, maybe soil profiles and build up you know, nearly a, a 3D image of, uh, of the area. Teachers who were using the, the GIS uh, seemed comfortable with it. Some people like myself struggled a little bit in, uh, and at times were frustrated in, in remembering the process to get through the, to the different uh, parts of the program. Ben, our ICT teacher, used the lessons with our students to take them through the, the processes and the format of the GIS and with us he had about four lessons over about five weeks. Um, we did have time in the classroom where, where we used it on our interactive whiteboards which, which we've just had put in the classes so we um, had students up showing us where they'd got up to and, and what they were doing and for me there were times I was, oh so that's how you do that because some of the students uh, picked it up quite quite easily. The teachers found it um, okay to learn the new program. Uh, it's generally there's the, it's a little bit clumsy the program such that there's only kind of one way to get through it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very sequential. Uh, with other programs I'm used to you can kind of go multiple pathways to get to a certain event. But in saying that, once you learnt those pathways, uh, it was you know, you can get them, you can get what you want. It's a matter of getting those skills up to then let the creativity flow. If I was to do this again with the, with the teachers, I think we'd allocate a bit more time to learning with the, the teachers beforehand and what the capabilities of the program were uh, and how the software worked with our machines. The, the students responded to the program pretty well. Uh, it was just like a new program. I think kids are very adaptable to new stuff. Once I taught them where the data was and how the key buttons across the toolbar, that worked, they were fine. The teachers had a, who were interested in being involved in the project had a look at the draft geography curriculum and went about designing a unit of work around uh, their year level and the skills that they'd be utilising and using the spatial technologies. They then put that into practice over the first uh, five, six weeks of Term 4. I have a year two class and I wanted to introduce them to geography and spatial technology. I use the GIS data to do this. Our inquiry was to find a park within three kilometres, three to four kilometres of school where we could have an end of year picnic, something that would suit out the needs that they think they needed a park. So we brainstormed all the things they would like at a park. You know, toilets, flying foxes, slippery dips, all those exciting things. And then we looked at um, the GIS data to find the parks that were close to our school. As part of the trial, I was hoping that my year twos would get a better understanding of the difference between 2D technology and 3D technology to be able to transfer the images they have in their head down to images on paper. I wanted them to get a perspective of distance from one place to another place and also the process of collecting data and selecting um, a possible place to go and visit. I wanted them to get out of the school, 
to be totally involved in something and carry something through from an initial idea through to a conclusion that ended in an excursion. Very motivating for myself and very motivating for the children. I like to learn new things, they love to learn new things and I found that they really relate to anything that is in a digital format. They, um, their whole life is around using computers and technology so they loved using those tools and they were just completely involved in the activity. My year two class loved using the data. They loved um, finding their houses, they loved finding their street, using the information tool to find their street. They all wanted to measure how far it was from the school to their house. They loved using the um, near maps because they could look from a 3D point of view and they could find, oh, there's my rubbish bin, there's my plate, my um, yard, and then they could find their way back to school, which way they walked to school, so that they could trace it on the map. They became very good at using the tools, probably better than me. If I'd get a bit lost, they'd say, oh, use this, use that. You know, go to use this one that I haven't hadn't even used. They would suggest that I use one of the little icons on the top. So they really got involved, they're really enthusiastic and they're really looking forward to the excursion. For the trial I developed an inquiry question of what was the distribution of the land and what was the purpose of it. Was it re economic, was it retail, was it tourism? And we focus on that throughout it. Um, so the idea of it, particularly because Vic Harbour is a tourist town, it was the idea was to find out is their perception of the town the same when they actually looked into the data or is it more residential, is it more tourism, is it more agricultural? And so that was the big idea we focused around. As soon as we put the map of Victor Harbour up, we were able to see where the distribution of housing and activity was. There was a whole blank space towards the outer edge of Victor Harbour and then there was lots towards the foreshore. So that really centred us in on what we were trying to look at anyway, the distribution of land. So it was really good for them to visually see that. And using the zoom tool on the program, we were able to zoom right into the place we wanted, to where you could see the roads, you could see where the land plots were, the size of the land and the shape, and that's how they were able to distinguish what, what was what. Kids are obviously locals and so they knew a lot about the land already. So we started there, what they already knew. So I gave them a map and I asked them where to put the residential areas were, where the tourist areas, where the retail areas were. And then we moved on from that using the data. So we looked at those things again, but we used the data to do it and see if it was the same as what they initially thought they knew about the town. My year fives were really keen to use the data. They were initially inquisitive about the geography topic, seeing as though they hadn't really seen it before or knew anything about it. Uh, their initial perceptions of what geography was, I think, changed throughout the process, which was good. They were really keen to use the data. Whenever I would say, who wants to come and use the information tool, they were really, really keen. Every hand went up, which was great. They were really keen to use the layer tool, which putting more things onto the map. So I started initially with a few layers. They were keen to put more on to find more and more about Victor Harbour, which was great as the process went on. When we started looking at the data and seeing all the different things you can do with it and not just looking through roadmaps, it really changed their perceptions. So geography to them became more. It became more interactive. It became more interesting when I'd say we've been doing geography and this is what we were doing. They were really keen to do it. So it was really great to, to have the trial. In looking at what people live where they do as a Year 7 focus, uh, the students in my class came up with a questionnaire to ask their parents and out of that we came up with four questions, four inquiry questions. We also sat as a class and did an inquiry where people used three tokens in front of them. They put a token out when they wanted to uh, comment on what somebody said and then after having commented they needed to leave with a question so that maybe somebody else can pick up on what they said. And out of that came uh, three more possible inquiry questions. So that left us with seven. Uh, 28 students in the class, so if they chose uh, four students to a, a question and then they started using the GIS to help map out what they were going to, to do. The students would come to me once a week uh, with the GIS and the teachers would talk about the inquiry questions and what I would do was say, okay, I'd get them schooled up and provide you know, the environment for best that they could do that sort of thing. 
What I really wanted the students to do was to use the GIS to find location on, on various uh, aspects to help answer their question. So one group was looking at a, a bus service, a feasibility of a bus service through Victor Harbour, mainly for the elderly people, so they needed to find out where the uh, retirement villages and that were, where and where the sites were that they might frequently visit, like the hairdressers or the shopping centre, and uh, where, where the route may go. Another group was looking at fire prone areas in Victor Harbour. So where are the current CFS sites located? Where are the, the, the water trucks located? At the beginning, to use it, confidence in myself is probably a big, big um, stopping point because I'm not of the age where computers were there initially, but you get used to them. And once you find out there's a good reason to use it, that was my motivation. The motivation for me was that I could see that this would really engage the students. I could see the computer literate children today would be on it very quickly and been able to manoeuvre their way through it, that when they wanted to find out information, they could use these sort of tools to present it and to interpret. Um, I found that they were excited by it. Um, when we started experimenting with things such as near maps, that was the first easily engaging thing to that they can measure, see things from the past, compare it to now and the future. I've been really encouraged with the dialogue that's been going on between some of the teachers who've been using the GIS and the people who haven't been using it and, and their interest in, in what it does. Uh, I think that Ben, the ICT teacher, uh, teaching lessons across at 7, uh, is able to have some input and use the GIS in his other programs, uh, other computer programs that he, he uses, uh, and I think that will help to to uh, make more students and even teachers comfortable with it. I think that next year we need to purchase the full program so that when we do our penguin statistics over on Granite Island or we do some research on the, of our wetlands or Hamash River estuary, that we can actually feed that data into the computer and graph it and, and use the mapping to go with that. So I, th I would think that we would um, probably, a number of classes would start using the GIS system on around how they, some topics that they, they're teaching with their class. So as a teacher having to teach the geography curriculum, I initially had an interest in the subject having done it through high school. Um, seeing the curriculum, it was really actually quite easy to use. It was quite um, well structured. You were able to clearly see the big idea and it clearly said what the process was within that. So it didn't just say this is what you have to do, do geography and didn't tell you what to do with it. It then gave you ideas of what you could look at and it was progressive as the years went on. To get out of the school, to be totally involved in something and carry something through from an initial idea through to a conclusion that ended in an excursion.